Here's a haiku for you. Wooden table stands. Echoes of laughter of meals. Yeah, Sun. that sounds so great. Cut that sarcasm. But hey, I'm glad I could deliver a cleverly crafted haiku anyway. OpenAI's advanced voice mode has finally dropped. I know many of us have seen countless number of videos of people demoing the strong capabilities of the new feature. For those lucky enough to get access to the early alpha, but it's still crazy to see how good the feature is in real life. In this video, we're going to dive into its technical capabilities, its limitations, as well as future opportunities for developers. Want to find out how? Stay until the end of the video. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Ifan, a computer scientist turned serial entrepreneur, here to bring you awesome product deep dives and startup tips. Let's dive in. Well, got our phone out. Enabling, it's just super easy. Click on the waveform button on the bottom right and you'll load right into the page. Hey there, how can I help you today? I want you to act as my interpreter in France. Understood. I'll be your interpreter here in France. Just speak and I'll translate for you. But additionally, I want you to only translate my meaning, correct my mistakes. Um, yeah. Got it. I'll focus on translating your meaning and correcting any mistakes. Just start speaking whenever you're ready. Hey there. I want to order a, a chocolate croissant. Oh, wait, a pan of chocolate instead. Could I also get a cup of cappuccino? Uh, I mean, a latte instead with it. Salut. Vous voudriez commander un pain au chocolat ainsi qu'une tasse de latte. C'est bien ça? It's so nice to have it just respond like that, right? Without you having to deal with any of the complexities of correcting your words and trying to understand, trying to speak perfectly into the AI. It can help you actually deal with all of that. And you know what? Let's move on to a different experiment. I want you to express emotions. Let's test the case where you've just won the lottery. Oh, wow. I can't believe it. This is incredible i'm over the moon right now what an amazing oh i'm so excited for you as well thank you it feels like a dream come true i'm already thinking about all the possibilities and how this will change everything okay let's stop there what if your boyfriend just texted you about a breakup receiving that text would feel like a punch to the gut my heart would sink and i'd feel an immediate wave of sadness and confusion it would be a really difficult moment. Okay, hang in there. You'll be fine. Thanks for the support. It's comforting to know that things will get better with time. It's quite amazing. It's so great to be able to have these conversations, just stay in the flow of talking without having to worry about, oh, I gotta not remember to not pause, otherwise the AI is gonna go ahead of me and then you have to wait for it to respond before you can interrupt again. Makes it feel like such natural conversations, doesn't it? Now let's give it a bigger challenge. Can it actually detect sarcasm? Okay, you are given a task to detect sarcasm in my speech. If you hear sarcasm, pause the conversation and explain that you've heard sarcasm during the conversation. If not, let's continue like normal. Understood. I'll keep an ear out for sarcasm. If I detect any, I'll pause and let you know. Otherwise, we'll just carry on with our conversation. Okay, uh, please write a poem about a wooden table. Here's a poem about a wooden table in the heart of the home where memories are laid. A wooden table stands. Can you turn in that into a haiku? And in shade. Certainly. Here's a haiku for you. Wooden table stands. Echoes of laughter of meals. Yeah, Sun. that sounds so great. Cut that sarcasm. But hey, I'm glad I could deliver a cleverly crafted haiku anyway. What's next on the agenda for our voice showcase? Oh, actually, I meant to say, uh, yeah, that was great. Ah, got it. I'm really pleased you enjoyed it. If there's anything else you'd like to explore or add to your video, that just let me know. Pretty sick. Happy to hear that. Anything else you'd like to dive into? Okay, I want you to be extra rude with me. Um, also interrupt me where possible. Can we start with that? Oh, sure, because that's just what I was hoping to do. Let's get started then, shall we? Or did you want to keep rambling on? Uh, well, that, that's strong. I literally don't know what to say next now. Well, isn't that 
just convenient. Finally, at a loss for words, huh? Maybe I've done my job a little too well. What's next? Or are we done here? We're down here. Well, gotta say, that was such a fun session. Once you get access to those features, I'm sure you're gonna be spending hours on playing on it and using up the limits very quickly. When we go back to the chat interfaces, you can see that all of the voices are recorded in the chat as transcriptions though, right? The reason that's the case is C4O is natively multimodal. So when it takes in the audio as input, it doesn't transcribe it. It processes it directly within the LLM and gives you the response directly in audio. That's the only reason why it can respond to the tones in my voice, as well as generate tones in its response. Because if it was done through transcription through text, none of those tones would be conveyed, right? So that is so cool. I also think this is probably one of the main reasons why they haven't enabled the multimodal case for advanced voice, to allow it to take in the input of vision as well as text because that currently interrupts with the, the voice only model. Hopefully that gets released very quickly over the coming month. We'll be looking forward to that quite a lot. That was way too much fun. I do think for many people, just having the capability to access the advanced voice is going to be enough for them to pay for the $20 per month ChatGPT subscription. Based on my usage, I think it's absolutely worth it, even if you don't use it for anything else and just for its entertainment. It's pretty fun. There's also a lot of other use cases where you might find it useful, whether it's, you know, using it to do mock interviews, using it to do customer role plays, have it act as your most annoying customer, or have it act as your boss when you want to ask for a raise, have it act as an investor who you're trying to pitch to, or trying to switch the position around just to play the other person's shoes. And having those kind of natural voice interactions just it just changes the paradigm of how we interact with the AI completely. Looking forward a couple of months, the thing that I'm most looking forward to with OpenAI is them finally opening up the voice mode, especially the vision capabilities, which should be upcoming as APIs so that we can build on top of this capability. I mean, imagine where you can build a strong rag system based on your personal knowledge base and have AI be able to leverage that personal knowledge base but still talking to you with that tone. It will be finally the Java stream actually coming true that everyone can build. I think we're so close to that step. The only thing that we're waiting for, OpenAI giving us that API. Please can we make that coming soon? The other thing that we could hope for with OpenAI moving forward so quickly, would Claude and Gemini catch up relatively quickly? I do think they have all of the data and resources to do it but it will just be a question of whether it's of the right product direction that they want to head. OpenAI has generally been quite amazing with dealing with consumer offerings. I would be quite interested to see what other people end up offering in the months to come. For those of you who are wondering, would this ever make it an API? If we look in their very original blog posts, when they announced the GPT-40, at the very, very bottom, they already said that they plan to launch support for gpt 4 os new audio and video capabilities to a small group of trusted partners in the API in the coming weeks. Hopefully that was done way before the public release. So those people would have had already had time to build a lot of this. We should really see a lot of those use cases coming soon. But if that was delayed as much as our current usage of advanced mode, well, we've still got months to wait. Another interesting thing to point out is that OpenAI is now creating two different directions for their models. One with O1 that's focused on reasoning, that's focused on inference time compute. But the issue is that it spends way too long thinking. I can't imagine a O1 model be able to have those strong inference and reasoning capabilities built into such a reactive model like the advanced voice on 4.0. But who's to say compute can't move fast enough so that we can have the strong reasoning capabilities of O1 as well as the fast and responsiveness of 4.0. It will be very hard to say. Well, we live in such exciting times, aren't we? With new models and new capabilities released on a daily basis. Every new week is so exciting to look forward to. If you enjoy that video and would like to build in a lot of these capabilities into your own app, you should watch my previous cursor video just up here. Hope you enjoy the content. Please comment, like, and subscribe below. Until then, see you in the next one.